Today I will continue with the polynomials, um, lecture 10. Let's remember in the last lecture, let me remind you, we defined what a polynomial is over a ring. Uh, and especially let's look at this uh, corollary here. Uh, corollary, let me change this and settings. Yeah, corollary, it was, uh, we proved last time that if R has <coughs> no zero divisors and R, if R has one, then the uh, a polynomial is unit in Rx, uh, if and only if, if it's constant and not zero, uh, and is a unit in R. And uh, let me give one example of this. I mean, for, uh, so, well, let's give some example of that. So if you take uh, first example, if you take R, uh, the ring R to be the integers, uh, then in uh, in Rx in Zx uh, units are only units in Rx. Uh, no, this is not real numbers. Rx are. Uh, plus or minus one, these are the units in Z. And uh, if you take R to be uh, real numbers or complex or let's say real numbers, uh, then uh, in Rx, the units are, are real numbers, non-zero real numbers. Uh, R in R such that R is not zero. So these are the only only uh, units. For example, one plus, if you look at the polynomial, one plus x or one plus two x, uh, two x or one plus two x uh, are not unit. They are not unit in, uh, in, uh, in our x. Uh, but in, if you have zero divisors, then the room might be different. So here's an example, A. Let's consider the ring as to be Z4 and consider Z4X, um, the units in, so let's, let's, let's write like this, the units in R. So Z4 is just, uh, remember, it's just zero, one, two, three, the, the classes of these, of course, uh, and the units are only one and three. One and three, zero, uh, two is not a unit because it's a zero divisor, uh, but the units in C4 is, let me give one example. If you look at f of x to be one plus uh, two x to the n, for example, then uh, f of x times f of x it is one plus two x to the n times one plus two x to the n. If you multiply them, we will have uh, four x to the n plus four x to the two n. But the four is equal to zero, the answer is, uh, the result is one. So therefore one plus two x to the n is a unit. Although it's not constant, uh, it's a unit in z for x. Uh, but uh, let's show one example, another example in this ring. Let's show that one plus x is not unit. Although one plus two x is unit, uh, one plus x is not unit in uh, Z for X, uh, suppose it is unit, uh, suppose, suppose that there is a polynomial uh, A0 plus A1 X plus blah, blah, A N X to the N, when you multiply that polynomial by one plus uh, X, Suppose we get one, and if you expand this polynomial, you have, so let's see, let's multiply zero plus a one x plus 
a two x squared plus a n x to the n. If you, when you multiply by x, it is a zero x plus a one x squared a n minus one x to the n minus one plus a n x to the n. And that is equal to a zero plus a one, so a zero plus a one x plus a one plus a two x squared. Uh, the, the, this is, sorry, the, here it is n and plus one. Uh, next term is uh, a n minus one plus a n times x to the n plus a n x to the n plus one. So since this is equal to one, uh, we get a zero is equal to one, a zero plus a one is equal to zero, a one plus a two is equal to zero. Uh, so a n minus one plus a n is equal to zero, and a n is equal to zero, and this has no solution. The reason is that if a n is zero, then a n minus one is zero, a n minus two is zero, so a one is zero, a two, a zero is zero from the last two equations, but a one must be one. No solution. Therefore, therefore. This polynomial one plus x is not unit. Okay, that's uh, from the last time. Now let's continue with the polynomials. And uh, the theorem that we prove we will prove first is division algorithm. So before this, uh, let me remind you. So let, uh, uh, let's say M and uh, N be two integers with N is uh, greater than zero. Then if you divide M by N, uh, so when you divide M by N, there is a quotient Q and there is a remainder R. And this R satisfies this following property that R is between zero and N minus one. So that there exists unique integers. Uh, this, uh, like, let's say M, you, you can write Q times N plus R. This R is between zero and N, N, N minus one. So let's remember that. Now we will prove that uh, polynomial version of this uh, division algorithm. This is the division algorithm, of course. In number three. Okay. Now, so here's the theorem. This is the division algorithm for uh, polynomials. So let R be a quantitative ring. With one. Uh, and F of X, G of X. G of X be polynomials in Rx such that uh, not that such that uh, the leading coefficient of Uh, GX is the unit. For example, if I is a field, this is always 
it is satisfied. Everything is a unit. Uh, so if when you have, whenever you have a non-zero polynomial, then there exist unique polynomials. Then there exist exist unique polynomials. Uh, Qx and Rx in Rx such that uh, we may write f of x as above such that f of x is equal to Qx times g of x plus r of x uh, where uh, the degree of R is less than the degree of G. So in particular, it, R might be zero, so that its degree is minus infinity. So here's proof. Uh, proof. So if the degree of f of x is less than the degree of g of x, then, uh, then you take, we may take q of x to be zero and r of x to be f of x. So that this becomes f of x is q of x times g of x plus uh, r of x, which is f of x, and the degree of f of x is uh, less than the degree of g of x, that satisfies the uh, trap, uh, conclusion of the theorem. Okay, now assume that, assume that degree of g, the degree of f of x is greater than the degree of G of X, and the proof is by induction on N. The proof is induction on N, where N is the degree of F. Uh, okay. If the degree of, oh, so I remember G of X is not zero, the degree of f is zero. So if n is equal to zero, degree of f of x is zero. So since the degree of g of x is less than or equal to, uh, degree of f, g of x is less than or equal to f, f of x. So this is degree of g of x is also zero. So that uh, f of x is constant and the g of x is another constant and S is a unit in R, this leading coefficient in R. And in this case, uh, we may write R is equal to, R is equal to uh, R times S inverse times S plus zero. So this R is not a good notation, but let, let's write this a. a, 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 okay, yes, because I, we use r to be for the polynomial. Uh, so that this is uh, qx and that's rx. And the degree of rx is less than the degree of uh, g. Okay, what n is equal to zero, it is true, assume that uh, the, the conclusion that the theorem is true for all polynomials of degree greater than uh, less, so let now uh, n be greater than one and assume that assume that uh, the theorem holds for polynomials. 
f of x of degree with uh, f of x or of with degree of f of x is less than f of n minus one or less than f of n minus one. Now, uh, now that uh, Suppose that the degree of f of x is n, uh, and let's write uh, f of x as like this. So let's write f of x as a0 plus a1x plus a n x to the n, where a n is not zero. Uh, and let g of x to be b zero plus b one x plus b n x to the n, where m is, uh, so b n is unit in R, the, the leading coefficient and uh, m is less than or equal to uh, n. So, sorry, degree of f, uh, so we assume the degree of uh, f of x is greater than or equal to degree of g. Yeah, okay, that way. That's correct. Now let's consider, consider this polynomial. Uh, f1 of x is equal to, f of x minus x to the n minus m times a n times b m inverse times g of x. Let's consider this polynomial. So this polynomial, so let, let, let's do this. So a n is, uh, so f of x is a zero plus a one x plus a n x to the n. Uh, okay. And if you multiply this g n a n b m inverse, if you multiply this, you have uh, b zero a n b m inverse, blah, blah. Then the last term becomes uh, a n times x to the n, like this. Okay, if you x to the m, if you multiply this polynomial by uh, x to the n minus m, the result is so, so that the leading coefficient of this last polynomial, become, the last term becomes a n times x to the n, so that uh, f n, so that uh, Oops, sorry, I forgot here, g of x. Okay, so that uh, f of x minus x to the n minus m times a n b m inverse g of x. So when you mark, when you subtract uh, this, uh, the second polynomial from, from the first, first one, the term with the x to the n will cancel, so that we have a polynomial of degree uh, less than n. As degree uh, less than or equal to n minus one. Uh, by induction hypothesis, so we have this f of f one of x and g of x. By induction hypothesis, uh, there exists a polynomial, polynomials, uh, polynomials q1 uh, uh, x and rx in rx such that, such that f1 of x is q1 of x uh, g of x plus r of x and the degree of uh, r is less than, let's write like this, degree of g. Okay, so that if you, for f1 of x, if you write f of x minus 
uh, a n b m inverse x to the n minus m times g of x. So from here, if you put this term to the other side, we have f of x is equal to q1 of x plus a n times b m minus one. So remember, bm is invert uh, unit, so that we can write bm minus one, x to the n minus m times g of x plus r of x. And if you say that this is q of x, since the degree of uh, r is, uh, since the degree of r is less than the degree of g, we are done. This is, we wrote f of x as q of x, g of x plus r of x and the degree of r of x is less than the degree, uh, less than, less, not less than, equal to, less than the degree of uh, g of x. And the, so this is the existence, right? Now we have the uniqueness part. So let me write here existence, proof, existence. Hmm. Existence, now, Let's prove the uniqueness. Uh, suppose that we write f of x as uh, q of x, g of x plus r of x. And uh, we suppose we write another way q prime of x g of x plus r prime of x with the property that degree of r degree of r r of x is uh, and the degree of uh, r prime is less than the degree of g just so this assume uh, let's assume this so then uh, then we may write Q minus Q, so Q, Q, Q of X minus Q prime of X times G of X is equal to R prime of X minus R of X. R of X. So if uh, Q prime Q of X is not equal to Q prime of X, then uh, Um, yeah. Uh, suppose that this is not uh, this is not they are not uh, zero, so that uh, q of x minus q prime of x is not zero, so that. And the leading coefficient is of g of x is unit, remember? So let's write uh, q of x as, uh, let's write q, q of x minus q prime of x as something like uh, like this, C0 plus C1X plus CK X to the K, where CK is not zero. So suppose that the degree K, K is uh, greater than or equal to zero, of course. This is, not, this is non zero polynomial. And the G of X is, remember, it is B0 plus B1X plus blah, blah, BMX to the M, where BM unit in, uh, in R. So therefore, so you, when you multiply the Q of X minus Q prime of X with G of X, uh, you get a polynomial. Uh, and the last term is, the highest term is, uh, G C K B M X to the M plus K. Uh, 
and this CK times BM is not zero because BM is a BM unit, uh, so that it is not a zero divisor. So that CK times DM is not zero. So that means the degree of uh, uh, Q of X minus Q prime of X times G of X is, uh, let's say M plus K. Uh, namely, it is it is less. It's greater than or equal to. It's greater than or equal to degree of g of x. But on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, uh, degree of so r minus so the degree of r of x minus r prime of x is uh, less than, this is equal to less than degree of G of X. Uh, this, that's, this is equal to uh, degree of uh, Q of X minus Q prime of X times G of X, because R minus R prime is, R prime minus R, sorry, R prime minus R. Uh, but this is greater than or equal to degree of g of x. So that we, we obtained a contradiction, namely the degree of g of x is less than the degree of g of x by this contradiction. Uh, Q of x is equal to uh, Q prime of x. So therefore, R of X is equal to R prime of X uh, from the equality that we have about here, this equality from my star. Uh, so that uh, we prove the uniqueness of Q and R. So Q and R are unique. Okay. Next. Next. There is a definition. So, so if uh, if we write f of x as q of x plus times g of x plus r of x, where the degree of where the degree of r of x is less than the degree of g of x. So whenever we write like this, then uh, this Q of X is called the quotient and the R of X is called the remainder. Remainder on division uh, of g of x, f of x, sorry, by g of x. Namely, when when we have two polynomials, when we divide f of x by g of x, the quotient becomes uh, g of x, and the remainder is r of x. So let me give one example. So let's take R to be the integers. And let's say f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus one. And suppose that g of x is equal to x squared plus one. Uh, so let's find, let's find q of x and r of x such that, uh, they about to satisfied so the degree of uh, such that the f of x is equal to q of x g of x plus r of x and the degree of r is less than the degree of g g okay so we have here we have 3x to the 4 plus x 
cubed plus x squared minus x plus one. When you divide by uh, x squared plus one, it is three x to the four, uh, three x to the four, uh, x squared, sorry, x squared. So three x to the four plus three x squared. When you subtract, you, we have x cubed minus two x squared minus x plus one and uh, plus x. So x squared, x, sorry, x cubed plus x. And when you subtract once again, you have minus two x squared minus two x plus one and with minus two times. So minus two x squared minus two and it, the remainder is minus two x minus two, uh, plus two, sorry, oh, plus three, oops. So one minus, minus three. So therefore, uh, we may write, so three x to the four plus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus one as three uh, x squared, plus x minus two, this is q of x, this is q of x, this is r of x, uh, times x squared plus one, plus uh, minus two x plus three. So remember that, uh, see that the degree of r of x is uh, one, which is less than the degree of g of x. So that's an example. Okay, so here is the definition. The definition. So let R be a competitive ring with one. with one and uh, uh, f of x is a zero plus a one x sorry. Uh, okay let me quit here I will continue in the from here in the next uh, next lecture because uh, 40 minutes is over so let me quit here